Hi everyone and welcome to Decimal Point Analytics Unplugged. I'm Royston, your host for today, and today we'll be discussing equity insights, demystifying market moves, along with Srikant Wobble. Uh, Srikant is an AVP in research, valuation, and advisory for our company. Srikant brings over to 12 years of extensive work experience in equity research from reputed global firms like Morgan Stanley and PNK Securities. So Srikant, welcome to the show. Thanks, Royston. No, thanks for having me. Really excited and looking forward to our discussion. Wonderful, Shrikan. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, could you just start by telling us a little bit of yourself, uh, your past experiences in the industry, and your current role at Decimal Point Analytics? Uh, sure, Royston. So currently, I work as an AVP, a uh, Research Valuation and Advisory. Uh, prior to DP, I was associated with Morgan Stanley, where I used to track Italian, Spanish, and Northern banks. Before that, I used to work with BNK Securities, where I used to track Indian banks. Talking about my current responsibilities, uh, currently my team uh, works for a top GCC-based fund, where we help clients to take informed investment decisions. Uh, right now, we are tracking around 160 companies, uh, which represent 70% market capital of all GCC countries. And our routine task uh, includes financial modeling, valuation, um, uh, periodic report writing. Uh, we also work on presentation. The ultimate objective is to come up with uh, investment ideas, which will help clients to take uh, decisions on regarding their portfolio. Fascinating, yeah. I mean... Uh... So just to ask you, okay, out of all this, so how do you perceive, uh, you know, the current state of our global economy, uh, particularly in light of uh, recent developments that are happening? Royston, if you see in first week of August, uh, there was a mm-hmm. sharp decline in almost all major global markets. So yeah. I'm not sure when viewers are watching this video and by then situation might have changed. But currently, there are three, four reasons uh, which are driving uh, market correction. Uh, so in finance, there is a concept called carry trade. Okay, so uh, imagine there is a country A who offers loans at a very cheap interest rate. That's around 2%. So what smart investor will do is uh, he'll take loan from that country and then invest in some other country where he can generate more return, let's say around 10%. So what investor has done now is he has borrowed from country A at 2% and then invested same capital in country B where he can generate 10% return. This is called as a carry trade. Now replace this country A with Japan and country B with US. So this was happening from quite a long time now. Uh, If you see uh, Japanese interest rates, uh, interest rates in Japan were significantly lower. In fact, there was a time in between, I think around 2016 to 22, 23, interest rates were negative. So that means bank won't pay you any interest. In fact, you have to pay bank some amount to keep your deposited money secure with the bank. So uh, this is not a normal situation, but this happened in Japan because inflation rate in Japan was very low. In fact, there was a deflation at some point of time. Now, what central bank of any country does is when inflation is very low, then they will keep interest rates lower so that maximum people can borrow and spend it. So uh, this will give boost to economy of that particular country. So that was happening in Japan. And uh, all of a sudden, a uh, few days back, uh, Bank of Japan announced that they intend to increase the interest rate in Japan. So uh, the people who were doing carry trade, uh, their uh, spread will reduce, right? In fact, Bank of Japan also reduced, uh, sorry, increased the interest rate to 0.25% from 0 to 0.1% earlier. So investors become fearful that their uh, interest spread will reduce and they start selling US equities to repay loans taken from Japan. Uh, but again, this was not the only reason why markets were falling. Along with that, uh, if you see in US, the legendary Warren Buffett sold a significant portion in his holding which amounts to around 75 billion US dollar. Apart from it, there were key key data points out regarding US economy. First one is the unemployment rate. So this data shows the unemployment rate in US now stands at 4.3% versus 4.1% earlier. That means currently around 7.1 million people in US are unemployed compared to 6 million last year. 
Uh, again, there is one more key data point, uh, which is manufacturing index. So in US, this is measured by index called PMI index. So this index, July data shows this index is down to 46.8. So now investors are becoming fearful that manufacturing in US is uh, slowing down. In addition to that, unemployment rate is rising. So there is a fear that US may go into recession. And that's the reason a lot of investors are selling US equities and uh, which is causing market correction. Also, if you see the Fed rates are at all time high, investors expect rates to come down now, which we may see in September. Apart from it, uh, there is a war kind of situation between Iraq and Israel. So whenever there will be any kind of a war situation, it sends negative signal to market. Uh, so that's also one reason. So to cut down long story short, uh, change in uh, interest rates in Japan, then a uh, fear that the US may go into recession, then warlike situation between Iraq and Israel is causing market correction currently. Yeah, so that's quite insightful, uh, Shrikant. I mean, a lot of details and I thank you for sharing that. Uh, another thing I would want to ask here is in what ways are these uh, macroeconomic developments affecting India in particular? And uh, from an equity research perspective, uh, what's your take on the in on India's current economic position and prospects? So, Royce, if you see what's happening in Japan, the interest rate change and the lower inflation, so it's basically Japan's problem, not India's problem. Similarly, uh, slowdown of US is US problem, not directly related to India. Still, Indian market has corrected a bit. So, uh, this is mainly because uh, if you see the ownership structure of Indian equities, a majority holding is with FIIs, that is foreign institutional investors. So, currently in Indian market, FIR holding is around, I think, somewhere around 17%. So what's happening due to global uncertainties, these FIRs are uh, selling their portion and they want to move to safer asset class like US bonds or gold. But the good part about the Indian economy is the participation from DI investors and retail is increasing. And uh, that's the trend from past six months to one year. So whenever FIRs, FIRs are selling, then immediately DI and retail investors are participating in market and Indian market is recovering quicker. So this has been trained. And uh, secondly, talking about valuation point of view. So if you see current uh, index P is around 23, uh, which is not overvalued, which is not undervalued either. So uh, I believe the market is fairly valued at this point of time. But important thing we need to see is that uh, uh, Nifty has given around 25% return in past one year. So there will be some uh, profit booking at this point of time. But if you're a long-term investor, uh, this uh, recent market correction should serve as a buying opportunity because world is bullish about Indian growth story and uh, positive things are there uh, to happen about India. So India will definitely help to create more wealth for long-term investors. Mm. Interesting. Uh, so I would want to bring this topic out wherein, you know, I just want your understanding of uh, how do you think uh, artificial intelligence, right, is influencing the equity research process here? And uh, do you also believe its growing use might affect job creation in this particular field? Uh, I would say Royston, uh, AI is helping uh, research process uh, to make it more efficient. There are endless possibilities where AI can use in equity research, which will increase efficiency. So using artificial intelligence, we can uh, automate a lot of routine tasks. Also, AI can uh, work on large chunk of data and come up with uh, trends which may affect the stock prices. And uh, uh, so there are a lot of possibilities with AI. So, uh, talking about your second question, whether it poses uh, Challenges to jobs. So honestly, I don't think so. But what I believe is that the nature of job will definitely going to change. For example, assume if particular analyst is currently spending a lot of time on routine tasks. Now this task can be automated using AI. So analyst will now spend that additional time on an analysis part or take strategic decision. In fact, I strongly feel the integration of artificial intelligence with equity research. Uh, can create more job like create uh, AI models, generate and manage the AI models. So I think AI is going to help research. Great. 
Um, so yeah, coming back to what TBA has as a value proposition. So I would want to ask you, so how does Reese, uh, the leadership at Decimal Point Analytics inspire innovation and uh, what makes the work environment unique in terms of learning and technological enhancement from your point of view? Royston, I'm glad that you asked this question because if you see in DPA, we have visionary leadership. We consistently support us in our respective fields. Uh, we are committed to bring innovation to our work. Currently, we are working on a number of projects where we are using uh, artificial intelligence, LLM, quantum computing. And in fact, uh, which makes life at DPA full of learning and we get a chance to work on a cutting edge technology. Also, uh, we always try to deliver wow to our customers, clients, which is also important DPA value. Wonderful. I mean, that was what uh, DPA adds in terms of value. So yes, uh, that concludes uh, today's episode of uh, Decimal Point Analytics Unplugged podcast from my side. Uh, I would want to thank you, Shrikant, for sharing your insights. It's been quite detailed. Thanks, Austin. Thanks for having me. All right. So, listeners, uh, we hope you found this discussion informative and insightful. Be sure to tune uh, tune in uh, in the next time for more conversations on industry trends. Till then, stay curious, stay learning. This is your host, Royston, signing off. Thank you.